fifth graders, this is Mrs. Duncan from Lipscomb Elementary and I am going to do some math gardening with you guys today. I am trying to figure out the area and perimeter of my flower and vegetable garden and this isn't your average garden. I have it in kind of a funny shape here. And I do know that the bottom of my garden is 40 inches and my side is 30 inches but I have some missing sides here. Can you help me figure those out? Well, maybe if I know that this total down here is 40 and this piece is 20, then that means this piece has to be, that's right, 20 inches as well, because 20 plus 20 would give me this bottom piece. All right, what about this missing side? Well, if I know this side is 30, and if I take 10 inches here, how do I get to 30? With 20 more inches. So if I know this is 20 inches, and I know this is 20 inches, then how do I figure out my total area and my total perimeter? Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Johnson from Perry Creek. I've told you all along that map is everywhere and hopefully you are finding it around your house. Maybe you can bake something and use your fractions, change those fractions into decimals. Grab some dice, roll them, build lar numbers larger than millions, multiply those numbers, divide those numbers. Have fun with math. Hello Allendale Alligators, welcome to Math Tip Storytime. Today we're gonna to travel to the land of Galen. The land of Galen was ruled by four giant queens. Each of the queens had two princesses. Each princess had two children, which were twins. These twins were eight years old, and they all lived happily ever after. Okay, so that wasn't the best story ever told. Maybe the worst, actually. I mean, it lacks some important features, such as, I don't know, a plot, some character development, you know, the stuff Mr. V and Mrs. Boucher would ask you to add to your story. But this is your math tip, so never mind all that. There is a point to the story, and that's to help you remember standard measurement conversions. Now the G stands for gallons, the Q stands for quarts, so there are four quarts in a gallon. The P's stand for pints, so there are eight pints in a gallon. The C's stand for cups, so there are 16 cups in a gallon. And the eights stand for eight ounces in each cup. Hi, fourth graders. This is Miss Wells from Clovercroft Elementary. One of the fun things you can do while you're at home is to create your own division word problems where you use the remainder to solve the problem. Remember to use one of the following three ways to interpret your remainder. Three ways to interpret your remainder. Use only the quotient. Add one to the quotient. Use only the remainder. Hi, this is Ms. Sievers. And I'm Mrs. Ruff. We're practicing safe social distancing, but at the same time bringing you a math lesson. We're talking about equivalent fractions, which are different fractions that name the same part of a whole. You can use factors and multiples to find equivalent fractions. For example, since 3 is a factor of both 9 and 12, 9 twelfths and 3 fourths are equivalent fractions. You can also use models, bar models here. I have a model here representing two thirds. I'm gonna multiply it by a fractional form of one, which is two over two. I'll draw my line to represent that. And then you can see that it's equivalent to four six. Two thirds is the same amount as four six. Hello everyone, this is Mr. LZ, fourth grade math teacher from Chapman Retreat Elementary. And I just want to encourage and remind everybody that multiplication and division will always be important. So please continue to practice those multiplication facts, those fact families. Get you a piece of chalk, go outside and color code your driveway with multiplication facts. And it's not just fun for you, but it's fun for the neighborhood. You guys have a great day. Hey boys and girls, I hope you're remembering your factors and your multiples. Remember, multiply, multiples. Higher, go higher, go higher, go higher. We break down the factors. They're lower, go lower, go lower. Go lower. Hey Edmondson fourth grade mathematicians, Miss Curry here with a great idea on how to study those multiplication and division facts. As you know, they're inverse operations, so it's a great way to study them together. What you'll do is start out with you and an older family member. You'll take a stack of cards, and I'm gonna teach you the game Dare to Divide. Each of you will then get three cards. And you'll turn over, one person will turn over the top two cards and you'll multiply them together to create a multiple. Six 
times 4 is 24, so that becomes your target number. Then each player will take their three cards and see if they have factors of that multiple. So then they'll create those division equations. The next player will then do the same thing. Each equation that you can make creates one point. The first player to 10 points wins. Hi kids, this is Mr. Higgins. I'm gonna to talk to you today about math and soul studies. If you're gonna do math every day, do extra math. If you wanna review soul studies, Look at Soul Studies Weekly, look at our Google Classroom, Mrs. Gibbs and myself. Oh, hey, fourth grade math students. I'm Ms. Hayes from Grasson Elementary, and you caught me listening to some of my favorite tunes. Speaking of tunes, here's a fun idea. Why not create your own math song? Did you know scientists have proven that putting math to music can help you remember it better? In my classes, we listen to a lot of songs on all sorts of math topics, from algebra, multiplication, prime numbers. There are so many great math songs already written, like the ones on vocabulary, number rocks, and one of my favorites, Mr. DeMeo. Hello there, this is Ms. Gowers from Hunters Bend Elementary. I'm sure all of you fourth graders out there are finding lots of ways to stay busy while we're spending so much time at home. I've been learning how to bake bread from scratch and it has been a delicious hobby to practice. But with any type of cooking, you can use that as a time to practice equivalent fractions. Every time you have to measure out an ingredient for a recipe, try creating that same amount using a different measuring cup. You may find that the amount you can eat can be created in many different ways. I use fractions every day at home. As I tell my students all the time, this is real life math. Hey there, this is Ms. Cunningham from Heritage Elementary, stopping by to show everyone a fun mental math challenge that you guys can do at home. So the first thing that you need is a deck of cards and you wanna pull three. And the goal is to arrange your numbers and do a little bit of math, so that way in the end, you end up with the number one. So for instance, this time I've pulled the number seven, five, and two. Well, two plus five is seven, and seven divided by seven equals one. So I was able to use my, all of my cards and end up with the number one. Hello, my name is Mr. Robertson. I'm a fourth grade math and science teacher at Jordan Elementary, and today I want to share with you an idea for a math race. If you're going to do your math race outside, then you'll need note cards, sticky notes, or pieces of paper to write the problems on. You'll need a set of cards for each person playing. Um, write appropriate problems for the grade level that you're in. So if you're in kindergarten, first or second grade, you might want to do addition and subtraction problems. If you're in third grade and you want to practice your multiplication facts, you can do that. And fourth and fifth graders, you might want to challenge um, as well with multi-digit multiplication or division problems. Lay out your cards along your route that you're going to be running. Okay, both racers will start at the same time and run to their first problem. You'll solve it. As soon as you solve it, you will run to the next card and you will continue going until you get to the finish line. Whenever you play this outside, since you are running, you might want to use like a highlighter or a marker, something with a lid to make sure that you don't have any danger if you were to fall on your writing utensil. It's Mrs. Greenow here to give you a little math tip. If you've been bored, you could try using some tape and some chalk to make some stained glass art on your sidewalk and then you can mathify it by finding different angles, acute angles, obtuse angles, and parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and all kinds of shapes in your drawing. Hey fourth graders, it's Miss Iggy from Longview and today I'm going to show you how you can play Simon Says with geometry vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word is a point. A point is an exact location in space. All you have to do to show a point is simply put your hand into a fist and put it straight out in front of you like so. Our next one is a line, which is a straight path of points that continues without end in both directions. Instead of an end point, you want to make sure your hands are like an arrow. A line segment is part of a line between two end points, so you want to make sure that your hands represent end points and not arrows. A ray is part of a line that has one end point over here and continues without end in one direction. So end point and arrow. Hey Nolensville Cardinals, it's Mrs. Kretzi. If you're looking for a taste of math at home, get in the kitchen. Grab your favorite recipe card, get out your ingredients, your measuring cups, and your measuring tools. And of course, with adult supervision, bake your favorite dish or casserole or dessert. I promise when you are measuring, you're gonna make meaningful connections to our measuring units 
and fractions. And when you're done, you get a tasty treat. And while your dish or your casserole or your dessert is baking, go ahead and calculate your ingredients and see how much you need for two batches or even three batches. Hi, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Bailey from Oakview Elementary. I hope you guys are well and enjoying your time at home. I wanted to remind you to practice your multiplication facts while you're home. There's so many ways you can do this. You can do this pencil paper, you can do it with dice, with cards, you can do them with apps or websites. You can even do them with flashcards or make your own game and challenge someone in your family. Hi boys and girls, this is Mr. Baki. I would like to give a shout out to Sunset Elementary. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you one of my favorite games to play in math, which is called Make 24. It's a great game, it's challenging, it gives you great practice in your basic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and it's fun. So let's get started. I have picked four numbers, uh, two, three, five, nine. So I have to use those four numbers only once to equal 24 using those operations. So let's get started. Nine minus five equals four. So those are the first two numbers I've used. I will cross those out. So I have cr created a new number, which is four. I still have two other numbers that I have to use. And if I know my multiplication, two times three equals six. So now I'm gonna cross out the three, I'm gonna cross out the two, and I've used those four numbers that we originally started with and created two new numbers, which is the four and the six. And sticking with multiplication, if I do four times six, it equals 24. Hi Trinity fourth graders, Ms. Tanner here. I've been thinking about all the ways that we can use our geometry vocabulary. So quick review. Remember we have different types of lines, like parallel lines that go side by side, but they never cross. We have perpendicular lines that cross at a point and are special because they make a perfect square or right angle. And intersecting, lines cross at a point and make obtuse and acute angles. We also have different types of angles, like acute, which is less than 90, right, which makes 90 degrees, and obtuse, which is greater than 90, and also that special angle, a straight angle, which makes 180 degrees. So here's my challenge for you. Go around your house and have a scavenger hunt. See all the things that you can find that make these different kinds of angles. Hey, fourth grade. If you remember right before we got out, we were learning about measurements. You know that one yard is equal to three feet or 36 inches. Now you may have heard a new term called social distancing. That means when we go out into public, like to Target or to the grocery store, we should stay about six feet away from other people. So I want to know, how many yards is six feet? How many inches are in six feet? Hey Westwood fourth graders, it's Miss Graham. Wish we were in our classroom, but we're in my kitchen. I love to bake, and there's a lot of math that goes on in the kitchen, so that's where we're gonna begin uh, this week. When you go to the grocery, get about 10 items when you come in. Make a list of those items. Write down what you think the cost was, then look it up on the receipt. You can write comparison sentences. You can also um, round each item and get an estimate. 